For my weekend project, I'm going to head down to my local hardware store and I'm going to grab some of these big planters that I got. I'm going to need four of them. First thing I want to do though is they got holes in the bottom. So these are drainage holes for when you plant them. And I'm going to cover these up because I am going to be pouring water in. I don't want it to leak. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put about an inch of water in the bottom, not too much. The reason is when I mix the concrete, I don't want it sticking to the bottom. And I'm only going to use a 50 pound bag of concrete on here. So I'm going to pour the whole thing in and it's a good thing I'm outside because concrete is really dusty. You want to be outside where you're not going to mix it and get it in your mouth. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pour a little extra water in there and then I'm going to start mixing up. Now, I did use my drill and a paddle to mix it up. You can do it by hand. I just have to have a paddle. The problem is it looks like I mixed too much water, but I actually did it. It is going to dry up pretty quick. So I added a little bit more water and you want to get a nice consistency there. This is a little bit too much water, but as I kept mixing, it did dry up. The next thing you want to do is stick a pole in. I used a two by two fur board to do this. You can use an inch piece of metal conduit if you want. What I'm going to do to keep it level is I'm going to take a couple of scrap boards. I'm going to put them on there and I'm going to use some clamps on the sides. What this is going to do is squeeze the board and I can use that to level it inside the pot. First thing you got to make sure though is that the pot is level before you level the board. That way it looks nice and even. Once I get that on and it dries up overnight, it's going to be really strong. You can tell by the color change of the concrete. Look at this. It's really strong and it holds inside the bucket really nice. I'm not worried about this thing going anywhere or coming loose and it dries more. Next step I did was to make sure I leveled the ground. I want this nice and level. And moving this is really easy. You just tip it to the side and you can roll it in place. No need to carry it. Then on top of the concrete, I'm going to put some white rock. You can do this or you can put some potting soil and plant some flowers and some little bushes if you want. Next step was to go ahead and drill through the board and I'm going to add a hook to the top. This is where I'm going to put my string lights on. I'm going to put this in nice, not to poke it out through the other side. And once I get on, it's going to be nice and tight. Now these string lights I got off of Amazon are really good. This is not glass. They're shatterproof. They're plastic. Those are the kinds that are really good. I'm going to put the hook on there and I'm just going to start stringing it up and down and across. I'm also going to make sure I don't want in the high winds for these to come loose. So I'm going to use a zip tie to hold them in place. Take off the excess and I'm going to go to back and forth across the yard and look at this when it lights up. It's absolutely beautiful right when the sun is setting. I love it. It looks really good. It was inexpensive and I was able to make this actually in one day. Just wait for the concrete to dry overnight. It was spectacular. It's great for those cool afternoons in the summer where the family gets together. Here we're making some s'mores and having a great time. And I just hope this inspired you to go ahead and do your own DIY string lights across the yard. I've got this sad, sad area in my backyard that I really want to spruce up. And because of water restrictions, there's not much I can do about growing lawn. First thing I want to do, the area leveled out. Once I use that level and a board to make sure it's level as possible, I'm going to set out a base of reclaimed bricks that I had from my side yard. I want to get those spaced just perfect. For me, it's 27 inches. That's how wide I'm going to make this small little fire pit. Now, the reason I'm using the bricks is it makes a great base, easier to clean out the ashes than just using regular ground. Once I get all the bricks out, I'm going to use sand as a filler. A lot of people don't realize that sand is not only a good filler, but also a good insulator. So I'm going to put some sand down, rub it out, and make sure that it fills in all the cracks. If I got a little bit too much, then I can just go ahead and take it off. It's not a problem. Next, I'm going to start handing out these pavers. Now these are made perfect to go in a circle. What I'm going to do is lay these out and get them all around the edge of the bricks that I laid out. What I want to do is space them, but also leave some room because I may have to make some adjustments while I'm laying them out to get that perfect circle. On the next row, we don't want to lay the seams on top of each other. You're going to go ahead and mix it up and put the seams right over the next layer. On something like this, we're going to finish up the second row. Again, spacing as we go. Sometimes you have to make adjustments. But this fire pit with its size, three rows is going to be perfect. So we're going to get those all put together and mixed up. Next, we're going to make a top for it. What I'm going to do is since it's 27 inches wide, I'm going to cut a couple of boards to 27 inches. We're going to do five of them so that they can also not just be tall fit 27 inches, but the same in the width. 
So once I do that, I'm going to lay out some glue because we need to make a brace to hold these together. Now, as I've said in previous videos, glue is stronger than nails. So I'm going to lay this glue all the way out and then I'm going to lay my boards across. What I want to do is instead of clamping though, I'm going to put these across and then I'm going to use my nail gun just to put some nails in to hold it in place. doesn't take much. I'm just going to put one for each board. That glue will set up in about an hour and it's going to be strong. So once I get that set up, I'm going to take it and flip it over. Next, I want to do is take and find the middle of the board, mark it, and then I'm going to put a small nail in there. Once I got the middle all figured out, I'm going to set my tape measure at 13 and a half inches, which is half a 27. I don't need a string or anything like that. I can just set that tape measure right there and use it to mark around the edge. Once we get our circle all figured out and marked, it's not going to be that hard to cut it out. Now, the best tool for doing this is going to be a jigsaw. This jigsaw is perfect as long as you get the blade just right. And I propped up the board that way I don't, of course, cut through my table. I'm going to take this jigsaw all the way around the edge and it's going to just make a nice, great circle as long as I stick to the lines. Once I got it cut it out, let's go ahead and get it sanded down. And I'm going to need some handles. So I'm going to mark and drill, and I'm gonna put some just inexpensive handles that I got from the hardware store on each end. Now, once I got that all done, I'm gonna go ahead and test fit it on top of the fire pit, and that makes it great. So when the fire pit's not being used, watch this. It's gonna be perfect for having dinner or just having something to sit around and have a campfire. Now, we got their s'mores set out, so guess what? It's time to go ahead and get the campfire going, and it just makes for a wonderful, great afternoon. Now, fire's a little bit too high here, but we're going to set it down, get the family to come around, sing some songs, and just have a wonderful time. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY fire pit with tabletop. I'd like to be able to open my back door without letting the bugs in, but what I need to do is measure the door, come up with 33 inches, and go pick up some window screen from my hardware store. First thing I got to do, open up the packaging, and then I'm going to lay it out. It's 80 inches long, and as again, as it's 36 inches, I want to cut it right down the middle. So I'm going to cut it at the 18 inch mark. First thing I want to do also is lay out a straight board that I can cut across. I'm going to use a razor blade. You can use a pair of scissors. I'm using a razor blade on this one, and I know what you're thinking. He's cutting right through the table. But don't worry, this is one of my work tables. I can just go ahead and slice right through it. Once I get that screen cut, I'm going to separate them. Then I'm gonna grab some Velcro. This is a 24 inch strip. And what I'm gonna do is lay it out because it comes separated. I'm gonna put the two halves together. This kind of Velcro is sticky on both sides with paper that keeps it in. So once I get it all laid out, then I gotta measure it. I think I need about good eight strips. So I'm gonna cut these at three inches a piece. Go ahead and go down and mark it at the three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. 21 inch mark. That's going to give me eight good strips. I'm going to go ahead and cut those by keeping them together. I want each one of these to match up with each other. Once I get them cut, the next thing I got to do is go ahead and place them along the screen on one half where I want to lay them out. It's going to be about every foot or so, maybe a little bit less. The first thing also after that is to peel the backing off one side of the Velcro and I'm gonna place it right next to the edge on one side of the screens, about a couple of inches down from the top and the bottom. I'm gonna place all eight strips along the screen. Once I get that done, I'm gonna go ahead and peel the backing off of the strips, take the other screen that I have and fold it in half. It's easier to work when it's halfway folded. Then I'm gonna place it right where it needs to go, press down hard. I want this to adhere to the sticky part of the Velcro. Once I get that first half done, I'm going to go ahead and lay it down and get it all secured on the other side. Again, just some good pressure. Gives me some good overlap and it's sticking together really nice. Next step is I got to secure it to the door. So what I'm going to use is some pins and they've got a nice head on there and it's going to give it some security. So I'm going to put those into the door trim on the outside. Don't need to put too many, but just enough to make sure it stays secure. Now, I do have some overlap on the sides. You could fold those over to give it some extra strength, but I think it's going to hold up just great. Now, look at this. I've got this screen on. I can, if I need to, 
open my door, open the screens. It's not hard to go out of. And in the afternoon or early morning, I can open it up, keep the bugs out, and let the nice cool air in. It doesn't take much to put it together. And also, if I need to, I can open it up with some Velcro or some twine and hold it together. I hope you enjoyed this DIY screen door project as much as I did. Thank you for watching Home Talk, and we'll catch you next time.